Welcome to this week's NBA Stock Report for the week of January 17th. I'm ESPN's Tim Bontemps, and here's what's trending up and down around the association, beginning with the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, a month ago, I was in Brooklyn, where the Philadelphia 76ers lost to the Brooklyn Nets, fell to 500 on the season, and seemed to be being weighed down by all the speculation about what would happen with Ben Simmons, where Philadelphia would go from here, would this be a lost season for the Sixers, and it looked like things could really start to crumble at that point. All that's happened since then, the Sixers have won 10 of their last 12 games. Joel Embiid has been playing like an MVP candidate. And the Sixers are all of a sudden right back in the mix for home court advantage in the Eastern Conference playoff picture. And it's a credit to Joel Embiid. It's a credit to Doc Rivers, who's been able to keep this team afloat despite a myriad set of injuries and COVID absences and the Simmons drama hanging over them. And to me, if the Sixers can make a significant addition via Ben Simmons trade between now and the February 10th trade deadline, they have to look at their opportunity here in the Eastern Conference to make a real legitimate run at getting out of the conference and back to the NBA Finals for the first time in two decades. Joel Embiid is playing that well, and the Sixers look that good overall that if they can turn those empty $35 million on their salary books right now into real players, I think you have to give them a chance with the way things look right now in the Eastern Conference. Now we have to shift to the team that's tied with the Sixers in the standings in the East, and that's the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now look, it's been a dream season in Cleveland. Coach J.B. Bickerstaff gets a contract extension. General Manager Kobe Altman gets a contract extension. Darius Garland and Jared Allen look like all-star candidates, uh, both revelations this year for the Cavs. And Evan Mobley, who's been a complete revelation, arguably the most impactful rookie since Tim Duncan to come into a team and completely transform it the way he has, is he looks like the run the runaway winner of this year's Rookie of the Year award. So things are going great for the Cavs. They've won four games in a row, and now they have two big tests this week. On Monday, they get the Brooklyn Nets. We'll see if James Harden and Kyrie Irving are on the court together in Cleveland. And then they go to Chicago to play the Bulls, who obviously are down some players but are still leading the conference. And if the Cavs can get wins in those two games, they have Oklahoma City, a game they should win later in the week. All of a sudden, you're looking at a seven-game winning streak potentially for the Cavs and them rocketing even farther up the East standings. So great season so far for Cleveland. We'll see if they can carry it through to the rest of this week. And finally, we'll turn to the team that is leading the NBA standings right now, the Phoenix Suns, last year's NBA Finals participant from the Western Conference and a team that, frankly, despite that success, might be the most overlooked team in the league this season. You know, Phoenix came into the year with some people doubting them for the way they got to the Finals. Obviously, they played some beaten up teams due to injuries last year in the playoffs. The Lakers didn't have Anthony Davis at the end of their series. The Denver Nuggets didn't have Jamal Murray in their series. Um, but you go back now and you look at uh, what Phoenix is doing now, they've erased any questions that anybody had. I personally did not seeing them play the Bucks in the finals. But for people that did have questions about the Suns, those are all gone now. You know, they're playing great. They're now three games up in the loss column on the Golden State Warriors. They're dealing with their own issues right now with Steph Curry getting his hand checked out in Oakland. You have Draymond Green out for a significant period of time now with a calf issue. All of a sudden, the, the Phoenix Suns look like they have a stranglehold on not only being the team with the best record in the Western Conference, but having the best record in the entire league, which when you're looking towards the end of the playoffs, potentially having Game 7 in the Conference Finals against a potential and a potential matchup with the Golden State Warriors, and then Game 7 of the potential NBA Finals on their home court in Phoenix, that's a pretty huge thing for Chris Paul and the Suns. And right now, they certainly look like they're in pole position to lock up that, not only getting that number one seed in the West, but the number one seed throughout the NBA playoffs, which... Maybe we'll see them get back to the NBA Finals once again. Now we'll shift to the other side of the ledger and what's trending down around the league. And unfortunately, we have to start with a pretty depressing slate of injuries to star players over the past few days. Go back to Friday, Zach Levine lands, feels something in his knee. He's now out for an undetermined amount of time, though the Chicago Bulls got lucky there was no structural damage in his knee. You had Kevin Durant get rolled into by Bruce Brown, his teammate, um, in a game against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, or actually against the New Orleans Pelicans, I should say, on Friday. He's now out four to six weeks with an MCL sprain. And Draymond Green, the Warriors announced on Sunday, has a disc issue in his back, which is leading to this uh, recurring problem with his calf, which is a pretty scary-sounding injury. So not only is that three key players on three of the best teams in the league this year, in the Bulls, Nets, and Warriors, it's also three guys that were shoo-ins to make it to Cleveland for the All-Star game next month. And, you know, look, hopefully... You know, the most important thing for all three of those teams is to have those three star players available for the playoffs in a few months. That's obviously their number one priority. But certainly for the NBA and having its midseason marquee event next month, 
they would love to have you know one of the highest flying dunkers in the league in Zach Levine, one of its biggest personalities in Draymond Green, and arguably, arguably its best player in the middle of maybe his second MVP season in Kevin Durant on the court in Cleveland for that game. Now there's a chance that all three of those guys might not be there. And certainly Durant being out four to six weeks almost seems certain that he will not be playing in the All-Star game. And he might have been the captain of the Eastern Conference squad. So a really disappointing and depressing weekend from an injury standpoint. Hopefully all those guys get back healthy soon. But certainly not the kind of thing you want to be talking about no matter the context. Um, you know, seeing guys like that go out of the lineup for extended periods of time. The next item up in terms of stock down might be a bit of a surprise to people. And that's new Knicks forward Cam Reddish. Now, people were very excited when Cam Reddish got traded from the Atlanta Hawks to the New York Knicks last week. A very talented athletic guard, um, you know, shows flashes potential as a as a defense as a defender, um, as a as a guy that people look at as a playmaker. But if you look at the where the New York Knicks are from a roster standpoint, the reason I think this, the Cam Reddish's stock is down right now. It's because he got traded from a situation where he wanted to play more, and he got put in another situation where now he's probably going to want to play more. If you look at the, where the New York Knicks roster is, despite the fact that they traded a protected first-round pick for Cam Reddish, this is a team that is loaded up at the guard and wing positions. You know, Tom Thibodeau does not play small, so Julius Randle and, and Obi Toppin are going to man the power forward minutes pretty much exclusively, so that removes that spot. Then you've got R.J. Barrett, who's one of the highest minute game per game guys in the league at one of the wing spots. That's gone. Evan Fournier is probably going to remain a starter at the other spot. And you've got a bunch of guards that Tom Thibodeau likes to play. You've got Emmanuel Quickly. You've got Alec Burks. You've got Kemba Walker, who might be back soon from knee soreness. You've got Derrick Rose, who's going to be back in a few weeks from, his, from ankle surgery. You've got rookie Quentin Grimes, who Thibodeau has been impressed with and has been giving minutes to lately. That's a lot of guys to get a lot of minutes that Cam Reddish is now going to be trying to fight with for playing time. And now he's already missing the beginning of his tenure in New York with an ankle injury. So look, maybe I'll be wrong. And in a few weeks, he'll be playing 30 minutes a game and everything will be great. But for a guy that's been waiting for a long time to get out of Atlanta and get to a place where he thinks he could showcase himself, I don't think the New York Knicks are that team for him. And I'm wondering if we're going to be looking at Cam Reddish being stuck in sort of a perpetual situation that he's been in Atlanta where he's playing 12 or 15 minutes a game and he thinks he should be playing twice that many. Now we have to go to the final, the final spot in our stock down segment this week. And it's really a pretty obvious one for anyone who's watched the league this week. And that's the Los Angeles Lakers. Things are just a complete mess right now in Lakerland. The offense is ranked 24th in the league. The defense is ranked 20th in the league. They lose in Sacramento, and the PA system is playing cold as ice every time Russell Westbrook misses a shot, which, as we saw in that game, was a lot of times. And then the Lakers go to Denver on Saturday and get absolutely demolished, lose by nearly 40 points. LeBron James doesn't speak after the game. Magic Johnson tweets that it's uh, a game that uh, the Lakers should be apologizing for, and you know it's not right that Jeannie Buss, the owner of the team, is seeing this kind of uh, performance on the court. You've got LeBron James tweeting and apologizing on Sunday for the way the team played. Things are just a mess right now. Now, that being said, Anthony Davis is out. LeBron James is still healthy. Davis should be back in a couple weeks. LeBron James, beyond being healthy, is also still one of the best players in the NBA. And despite all the struggles and all the chaos around this team this year, if LeBron James and Anthony Davis are healthy come mid-April going into the playoffs, People are not going to want to play the L.A. Lakers. And frankly, for as bad as the Lakers are playing right now, the bottom of the West playoff picture is so soft compared to really any point in recent memory. Frankly, the conferences have flipped from a power uh, standpoint, like we talked about last week with the West not really being able to stand up to the Eastern Conference now from a talent perspective from top to bottom. Uh, the Lakers should make the play-in tournament at minimum, basically no matter what happens between now and the end of the year, as long as LeBron stays healthy, and assuming Anthony Davis comes back in the next couple weeks like he's supposed to. So that should give Laker fans some optimism that, the, that their, their team could potentially get this thing turned around here in the coming weeks. But look, right now, things are looking pretty ugly in Lakerland, and you know with the hardest schedule left in the league by a significant amount upcoming, and with already more than half the season gone by, the idea that this is just going to be a flip of a switch and things are going to start looking great for the Lakers, that seems out the window now. And there's going to be a lot of pain, I think, before this starts to look better at some point over the next couple months. But with that, that's the end of this week's NBA Stock Report. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy what should be a fun week of games, like always in the association. And we'll see you back here next week. 
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.